City today upgrading JP Morgan. That's to buy from neutral ahead of earnings this Thursday. One of our calls of the day. There are many uh, who own it, including Josh Brown, Jim Labenthal, and Amy Raskin. You go first, and then Steph on the other banks. I want to get your opinion there, too. But, Amy, it's yours. Sure. I think this is a good call. I mean, uh, honestly, Jamie Dimon talking about a hurricane scared me, and um, you never really want to get in front of that. And what did, exactly did he mean? But at Nine times earnings, um, the stock's down from 170 to 115. I think this is tactically a good trade. All right. So, Steph, even though you don't own JPM, hmm. um, I think what Kramer said is apropos to some other banks, too. He said, I love that, that call uh, of this one from Citi. Uh, with the Fed uh, hikes, they're going to make a ton of money. You must agree with that as it relates to the ones that you own, which are Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, and then Wells. Yeah, I mean, Wells is the most sensitive to higher interest rates, right? And remember, we started the year at the 10 year at 151. So even though it's pulled back in terms of yields, it's still a moneymaker for these companies. So for every 50 basis point in Fed fund move, um, that, that the Fed moves, um, it's uh, equivalent to 17 percent to earnings and 6 percent to net interest income. So they should do a good job. The key for Wells, because you know it's a restructuring story, is it really executing on costs um, and cost discipline. And the big number to watch for is 51.5 billion. That's the number, their expense number for the year. They need to reiterate that. The stock trades at 0.9 times book as compared to JP Morgan at 1.3 times. So yeah, JP should trade at a premium, no question about it. But I just think when you buy something closer to book, that's a better timing uh, mechanism. Mm. Morgan Stanley is just a total, they've diversified the, the business model through M&A. The big number to watch there is ROTCE at 20%. Do they reiterate that? going forward. So those are the two that I like. But I mean, they're all cheap, Scott. You just pick the one you, you really feel most comfortable with. OK. Uh, Jim Labenthal, you own JPM, you own Berkshire, you own City, you own Goldman. Yeah. And in all of these, what I'm looking for are macroeconomic indications, uh, particularly consumer credit and corporate credit. Obviously, we remember what Jamie Dimon said. I hope he doesn't come back as a meteorologist. Um, but I just want to hear about uh, credit quality and how that's ha uh, hanging in there, hopefully. I think his, uh, what his I actions speak loudly, though. He did not uh, raise the dividend while every other bank on Wall Street did last week. You know, my take yeah, on that, it's a good point. My take on that is that the CCAR results were pretty good, but I wasn't thrilled by any of the shareholder return announcements. I really wasn't thrilled by any of them. Um, and you're right, though. Your point is well made. Um, but let me be clear about something. I don't really care about, you know, one company's dividend in this space or one company missing or beating on earnings. What I really care is their insight into the global macroeconomic picture. So uh, their insight will probably be, be not market moving, but stock moving. I just don't think they have any better insight than any of us do. We're in this fog of war right now, uh, perhaps the most dense fog of war I can remember as long as I've been doing this. And I don't think it's any different if you're sitting at the head of a bank or if you're sitting on a trading desk in Chicago or whatever. So uh, I think caution is probably the smart move, and that's what J.P. Morgan did. Goldman Sachs raised its dividend, I think, 20 or 25 percent. Wells Fargo had a big dividend increase, uh, Morgan Stanley, and JPM, I think, if they really believe that there's a potential for a hurricane coming, um, is living up to what they said they are, which is a fortress balance sheet. And as a shareholder, I suppose I'm happy about Steph that. Steph Quick on Amex got downgraded today at Morgan Stanley. Uh, Kramer doesn't like the call. He was pretty clear about that earlier today. Amex has been saying their business is good. What's your take here? They also cut the price target to 143 from 223. And this is a premier franchise now trading at 14 times forward estimates. And I feel pretty good about at least the estimates for the quarter um, and for the full year because they've been doing a lot of restructuring internally. Loan balance growth is very strong. Uh, credit quality is benign. And billings, they said in May, were consistent with the first quarter. So I feel OK about the story. The stock is down 14 percent. It's held up relative to the other banks. But um, this is one that I think is a, a quality franchise on sale.